Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. My name is John Zimmerman and I'm super excited to have a guest in town here. Say hello, Stefan. Hello, screw stop signs. <laughs> We're gonna roll through the stop sign because that's what we do. Because stop signs are stupid. Yeah. Stefan, introduce yourself. Who are you? We're turning right here. Uh, I am a American educated civil engineer. Wanted to become a transportation engineer really badly and that's almost impossible to do in the US. So I decided to go to the, one of the few countries in the world that actually practices it scientifically, the Netherlands. Been working here three years, first for a company, now for the city of Harlem. And uh, I am now in Austin, Texas to see what they've been doing here with the fantastic work with the bike infrastructure. So we're, we're just making our way through the neighborhood here. We're gonna head down to a little project, uh, the Barton Springs Road project that is uh, a pilot project. So they're collecting data on it. There was a lane reduction to this and uh, an addition of what I like to call enhanced, quasi-protected bike lanes. Okay. Bike ramp, okay. Okay. So we got a, uh, say this is like an, your classical arterial road. So the Dutch equivalent of this would be a 50 kilometer an hour road. Yeah. Good, you got the bike lane separated. So in, I mean, the, uh, this is good. Instead of using asphalt, you know, we'd have like some kind of raised uh, concrete pad or a greenery or something like that. I'm gonna guess this is like quick build, so that makes sense. Yeah, so it's a, uh, since it is a pilot project, uh, quick build materials, although as soon as I say that, we're about to roll up onto a permanent uh, facility in terms of concrete, uh, a raised transition area and transit loading area, uh, so. Yeah, there's a little bit of both. A little bit of quick build and a little bit of uh, permanent stuff. So we're gonna be turning right up here, just before the bike share. So turn right in here. Yep. And then not all the way up, we're gonna find this little secret pathway over here. Okay. Oh, it is a secret path, okay. He wasn't lying. Secret path. So this is a, a fun little path because it um, represents how the city can you know, work productively with and collaboratively with the, the developers. So when this condo complex was being developed, uh, they wanted to have these gold towers that went up higher than the normal height limit in this neighborhood. And so one of the negotiations they had was, hey, we really need some connectivity to the trail that's up here. Um, hey, maybe we can work this out. And so that's what they did. They were able to negotiate the establishment of this natural surface trail to be able to be a part of and facilitate an easy all ages and abilities cut through to the park and to the trail up ahead. I do appreciate that it's not asphalt here. So, anyways, there you go. That's uh, your first five minutes of, uh, of riding here in, uh, in Austin. We have more to show you, but- and I have uh, not been hit by a pickup truck You yet. have not been hit by a pickup truck. We're, we're doing well so far. Any initial thoughts? Austin's a very civilized place. I like it. <laughs> John's a great host. And if we turn the, the camera around here and you really get a sense of just how close we are to downtown. You've got the downtown high rises right there and we're on a natural surface trail here uh, that's gonna take us right to the lake, Lady Bird Lake, and that will in turn get us to where we need to go. Uh, I'm gonna hypothesize that this is probably one of the most popular ways to get to the downtown. Oh, this is fantastic. Fantastic. 
And so now we're on the Lady Bird Lake, the Butler Hike and Bike Trail. And so this is, this is how I get to my grocery store. You know, when I want to go to the big market, not the little market. So does it explain so, why you're happy all the time? Yeah. yeah. yeah that, that's a good point, yeah. yeah. It's, it's good, good for you. Point. Yeah. Oops, yeah, gotcha. And we're turning right here. There you go. Another bike share station here. So let me show you another fun little, little uh, development bike path that got done, got negotiated. So that was an example that we saw over there of the natural surface trail that got negotiated. And then this is a negotiation with a protected bike lane. Okay, so I'm gonna guess this is, yeah, this is around six feet. Nice. Okay. So yeah, it doesn't go very far. It's just the length of the development of that uh, particular uh, building. But the real point is, is that that intersection there, when they finally do redesign Lamar, that's actually designed uh, for a, sort of a Dutch style protected intersection. Okay. And so That'll at least for that people, little, right? that yeah. portion's already built. That's gonna then come so, straight into here then, okay. And that'll also come straight into here. This is the money shot here. <laughs> Up on the Pfluger Bridge. This is where people get their uh, graduation photos, wedding shots. Which one's the Bat Bridge I hear so much about? It's down that way. Okay. So yeah, when I used to live in Texas, I, I mean, the ironic thing was that I didn't have a car. Right. Uh, I went to this little liberal arts school in Georgetown. Yeah. So, because I didn't have a car, the mobility options were so lacking that I might as well, as well have lived 500 miles away from Austin. Right? right, yeah. It was so hard to get to Austin, I spent almost no time here. Yeah, yeah. So, it's, it's interesting, like, blast of the past where 10 years later I'm back spending time in Austin like I wish I had yeah, years ago. Yeah, when you were here. So technically we could have stayed over there on like a shared use path, just to our right there. Yeah, is that what it is, legally? Yeah, it's legally it's a shared use path, you know, for both bikes and peds. We're gonna turn left here. You could try to go straight. <laughs> so this is the old decommissioned power plant. Okay. That we just passed. Two big things I noticed with the cars here. Yeah. More pickup trucks, like a lot more, and more Teslas also. Yeah. Like I'd say it's like doubled or tripled for both. And when you say more, you mean since the last time you were in the United States? Yeah, three years ago. Yeah, yeah, big jump. Oh, this is okay, wow. So boom, we're, we're here. That's how, how quick. And now this is proper auto loop. And then you are properly in the downtown area. And if you look down that way, there's more bike paths that gets back down to the bike path along the, the, the lake. Aha, uh -huh. I see work opportunities here. <laughs> Stop signs, yeah. It really is, that's one of the hardest things I've found that Europeans have a hard time understanding is just the sheer number of stop signs. Oh, I know. Because stop signs are really rare. Yes. Where I live. I've seen maybe in three years, six or so. Yeah. Stop signs. That's because stop signs are a pretty good indicator for how dangerous an intersection is. You have to come to a full stop. Right. To avoid a major dangerous crash. Yeah. Technically they have the right of way. Are they gonna let us pass? Okay.
And any of the Austin projects, have they uh, tried using any other kind of materials besides asphalt? Like, have they tried using the paving bricks or well, stones you're, you're or something like that? You're riding on the main other. Oh, concrete, yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Yeah, okay, because the concrete is what they have figured out how to use the red yeah. terracotta pigment yeah. in the slurry. Yeah, but I mean, like, so yeah. for the car surface, for instance, like, nope. have you ever, okay, okay. Nope. Car surface, yeah, no. There's one difference in either and, concrete um, for the car surface or asphalt, mostly asphalt. There's one difference I know that you know is that and you, when you're in the downtowns of a lot of Dutch cities, these, you know, they're streets, they're not through roads, so then they're used with paving bricks instead right. of asphalt. So right. you'll sometimes have an asphalt road, but then that's meant for the through movement. But the asphalt, even though we have all this great infrastructure here, it still feels largely like a car space, right? Because asphalt's a car material, mostly, and you still have, you know, 60% of the cross section. Yeah. And Well, and, and look where we're at. Now we're on Congress Avenue. You were asking about the Bat Bridge. That's the bridge to the right. So if you look down that way, that goes over the lake, and so that is the Bat Bridge, Congress Avenue, and, and this is an oversized monstrosity that is going to get redesigned and redone. Now, some of the designs they're considering could very well include pavers. Fantastic, could yeah. Very well, because they, they're going to try to prioritize it as a people-oriented space versus a car space. Well, it's not. Well, I have a solution for almost every American city that's facing bankruptcy and can traffic. It's like the roads we have at least two lanes in each direction yeah. are completely pointless. They waste money because the bottleneck is the intersection. Yeah. And this intersection is going to hit capacity well before a double lane road will. Yeah. So what they're doing is you can always flare out at the intersection, but once you go past 100 feet past the intersection, you have more than one lane, you're just throwing away money. Yeah. And you're just uh, making it where people can weave across, so it makes it more dangerous, it makes it more difficult to walk across. Yeah. And then it just induces demand for cars, so it's, it's completely self-defeating. And if you made it where they all became one-lane roads, you'd cut maintenance costs in half, you'd have all the room in the world for bike, uh, bike paths, greenery, car parking. It would, I really think it would solve 90% of the issue yeah. in so many American cities, is that, yeah, you have the space. It's easier to do it here because you have the space. It's a lot harder in Amsterdam where your right of way, your width of your streets and your roads are so constrained, yeah. you have to start thinking of creative solutions. Whereas here, it's, you got triple yeah. space to work with. And, the, and you mentioned Amsterdam, and that's to say nothing of Harlem. <laughs> Harlem's a whole nother level. <laughs> Hard. So now we're getting into the convention center area, so we're in the heart of South by Southwest, which is happening right now. We're going into the second weekend of, of South by Southwest. Today, of course, is Thursday. So uh, another question. Yeah. I noticed that the, the police cars, yeah. do the police patrol on bikes at all here? Nope. All cars. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm sure if, if a, a person on a bike was doing something incredibly dangerous, they would pull them over, but that's not why they're there. They're primarily there to ensure true safety and since that street was closed to motor vehicles for this event, uh, they're there to make sure that that happens. Yeah, that makes sense. I was just wondering, because you know in the Netherlands, the, down this a way. lot of the yep. bikes, uh, a lot of the patrols inside cities are done on bicycles. Yeah. Or the, the hunt hobbing, which is kind of like, I don't, I don't even necessarily know, the, it, it's kind of like the parking police, but it's, it's a bit more specific than that. It's yeah. just, it's all of the, it's a force for all of the low, dangerous uh, enforcement requests. So again, this is probably going to be the most Dutch experience, Amsterdam-like experience you're going to get on this trip. You've got lots and lots of people and lots of bikes. Yeah, pretty, yeah. I would say that's Let's giving me some here. flashbacks to Harlem. Let's pull over here by these uh, scooters. 
All right, we won't stop for long here, Stefan, but I just want to give you a chance to reflect on what you've seen so far. So again, we're here at the uh, convention center in downtown Austin, Texas on uh, Thursday, March 14th. And this is South by Southwest week. Yeah, what are some initial thoughts that you have so far? I think uh, well, everything they've done so far seems like a really good start. I'd uh, say everything I've seen here puts Austin well above a lot of other American cities I've seen so far. It seems like it's a good, honest effort to make the city uh, more friendly to anybody who's not inside of a motor vehicle. And of course, you know, I'm Dutch. The Dutch love to complain and critique. So, that, of course, I'm seeing all kinds of things. I'm like, oh, that could be better, that could be better. Yeah, yeah. But again, we have to be conscious of where we are yeah. and the progress we made. So I would compare this to maybe the Netherlands in like the 1970s when they were just starting. So I'm seeing a lot of encouraging signs, especially this part. So if, you, if they can build up good cycle infrastructure in the downtown where you're most constrained for space, the, the design part of it is a lot easier and the other parts we have a lot more space to work with. It's a little more difficult politically, yeah. but if you can do it right in the downtown, you can do it right anywhere. So I'm very pleased about everything I'm seeing. Yeah, and as, as I swing around and take a look at this, this is our downtown transit stop here. So this is the train station. Uh, so this also gives people the ability to, to ride the train all the way up to Leander, way up north, 30 miles up north, uh, and be able to make it here to downtown. And I am seeing train uh, with a 12 minute interval, five trains, five trains an hour. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, and Harlem has a, a sprinter or inner city train from uh, Harlem to Amsterdam every eight minutes, but I mean, 12 minutes, that's respectable, especially in Texas, so it's a good, it's a good start. Hey, thank you all so much for tuning in. This is the end of part one of my ride with Stefan. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And we're continuing to make our way eastbound, looking at some new infrastructure along the way with the ultimate goal of getting to the Mueller development, our former airport that has been developed into a brand new community. And we do have a chance to meet up with my good friend, Preston Tyree there. Uh, please join us for part two. And again, sending a huge thank you out to all my Active Towns ambassadors supporting the channel on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, YouTube Super Thanks, as well as making contributions to the nonprofit and purchasing things from the Active Towns store. Every little bit adds up and it's much appreciated. Thank you all so much.